Welcome back to our channel. If you're preparing for a supply chain analyst job interview, you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to discuss the top 5 most commonly asked questions in supply chain analyst interviews. Let's get started. 1. How would you approach forecasting demand for a new product launch with limited historical data? Answer. Forecasting demand for a new product can be approached using several strategies. Market analysis. Analyze the overall market trends, consumer behavior, and preferences within the industry. Study the demand for similar products to gauge potential demand for the new product. Qualitative methods. Conduct surveys and focus groups to gather potential customer feedback and preferences. Use expert judgment and Delphi method, where a panel of experts provides demand estimates. Analogous forecasting. Use historical data from similar products launched in the past to estimate the new product's demand. Adjust for differences in marketing strategy, target audience, and product features. Sales and marketing input. Collaborate with the sales and marketing teams to understand their expectations and plans. Analyze the marketing campaign reach and its potential impact on demand. Example, suppose a company is launching a new type of smartphone. They might analyze the sales data of previously launched smartphones with similar features, adjust for any differences in target demographics, and incorporate expert opinions from industry analysts. They could also conduct pre-launch surveys to gauge consumer interest and willingness to purchase. To know more about demand forecasting, check out the dedicated video, link in description. 2. Discuss the key factors to consider when selecting a transportation mode, e.g., air, ocean, rail, road, for a particular product. Answer. Key factors to consider. Cost. Transportation costs vary significantly between modes. Air freight is the most expensive, followed by road, rail, and ocean transport. The choice depends on the budget and the cost tolerance of the product. Speed. Air transport is the fastest, making it suitable for high-value or perishable goods that need quick delivery. Ocean and rail are slower but more cost-effective for bulk shipments with less time sensitivity. Distance. For international shipments, air and ocean are common choices. For domestic or regional shipments, road and rail are often more practical. Product characteristics. The nature of the product, e.g., size, weight, perishability, value, influences the choice of transportation. Fragile or high-value items may require faster and more secure modes like air or road. Reliability and frequency. Some modes are more reliable and have higher frequency schedules. For example, air transport offers more frequent departures than ocean shipping. Infrastructure and accessibility. The availability of infrastructure, such as airports, seaports, railways, and highways, affects the choice. The proximity of these facilities to the origin and destination points is crucial. Environmental impact. Companies increasingly consider the environmental footprint of their transportation choices. Rail and ocean transport are generally more eco-friendly than road and air transport. 3. How to implement an ABC classification system for inventory management. Answer. 1. Data collection. Gather detailed data on all inventory items, including sales volume, revenue, and consumption rate over a specific period. 2. Calculate annual usage value. For each item, calculate the annual consumption value using the formula. Annual usage value equals annual demand times unit cost. 3. Rank items by usage value. Sort all items in descending order based on their annual usage value. 4. Determine classification thresholds. Decide on the percentage of items that will be classified as A, B, and C categories. A common approach is the 80-15-5 rule. A items, top 20% of items account for 80% of the total usage value. B items, next 30% of items account for 15% of the total usage value. C items, remaining 50% of items account for 5% of the total usage value. 5. Categorize items. Classify the items into A, B, and C categories based on the determined thresholds. Example implementation, let's assume a company has 1,000 inventory items. Calculate the annual usage value for each item. Rank the items in descending order based on the annual usage value. Determine the top 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20
200 items, as A items, the next 30%, 300 items, as B items, and the remaining 50%, 500 items, as C items. Categorize the items accordingly. 6. Review and adjust. Periodically review the classifications and adjust as necessary based on changes in demand, cost, or consumption patterns. If you want to know more about inventory management problems, check out this video, link in description. 4. What key performance indicators, KPIs, would you track to measure the performance of a supply chain? How would you use these metrics to identify areas for improvement? Answer. Key KPIs. Order fulfillment cycle time. Measures the time taken from receiving an order to delivering the product. Improvement use. Shortening this time can enhance customer satisfaction and reduce costs. Analyzing delays in different stages helps in identifying bottlenecks. Inventory turnover. Indicates how often inventory is sold and replaced over a period. Improvement use, higher turnover suggests efficient inventory management. Low turnover can indicate overstocking or slow-moving products, prompting a review of inventory policies. Service level, OTF. Orders delivered on time, and in full. Improvement use, high OTF rates indicate excellent performance. Investigating the root causes of imperfect orders helps in improving order accuracy and delivery performance. Supply chain cost. Total cost of operating the supply chain, including production, transportation, warehousing, and inventory holding costs. Improvement use, monitoring these costs helps in identifying areas where cost efficiencies can be achieved, such as renegotiating supplier contracts or optimizing transportation routes. Demand forecast accuracy. Measures the accuracy of demand forecasts against actual sales. Improvement use, improving forecast accuracy reduces the risk of stockouts and overstocking. Analyzing discrepancies between forecasts and actual demand helps in refining forecasting methods. 5. How would you assess the potential risks in a supply chain and develop mitigation strategies? Answer. Risk assessment. Identify risks. Conduct a comprehensive risk assessment to identify potential risks across the supply chain, such as supplier disruptions, transportation delays, natural disasters, political instability, and demand variability. Analyze risks. Evaluate the likelihood and impact of each identified risk. Use tools like failure mode and effects analysis, FMEA, or risk matrices to prioritize risks based on their severity and probability. Develop mitigation strategies. Diversify suppliers. Avoid reliance on a single supplier by diversifying the supplier base. Establish relationships with multiple suppliers in different geographic locations to mitigate the risk of supplier disruptions. Inventory buffering. Maintain safety stock or buffer inventory for critical components to cushion against supply chain disruptions and demand spikes. Flexible logistics. Develop flexible logistics and transportation strategies, such as multimodal transportation options and multiple distribution centers, to ensure continuity in case of disruptions. Technology and visibility. Implement advanced technologies like IoT, blockchain, and supply chain management software to enhance real-time visibility and monitoring of the supply chain. This enables proactive risk management and quick response to disruptions. Contingency planning. Develop detailed contingency plans for various risk scenarios, outlining steps to be taken in case of a disruption. Conduct regular drills and simulations to ensure preparedness. We have a dedicated video on supply chain risk management, do check out link in the description. That's for today, preparing for these questions will help you demonstrate your expertise and confidence. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more tips and insights. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your interview.